reading of the scripture this morning is so apropos for this song and this moment in worship. The first chapter of Luke, which is our Christmas reading this morning. Mary says, my soul magnifies the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. And my spirit rejoices in the God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. And surely, somebody say surely. surely. From now on and for all generations, I will be called blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. And holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. For he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones. But he has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent even the rich empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy and according to the promise that he has made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Yes. And in those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah yes. and greeted even Elizabeth. And Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting and the child leaped in her womb. Yes. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Miracles are happening. And in that season, there was not just the miracle of Mary, but the miracle of Elizabeth. Call your name this morning and say, there's a miracle with my name on it. Come on, somebody. There's a miracle for Corletta. Hallelujah. I need you to call your name and say, there's a miracle with my name on it. Listen to the scriptures from Hebrews chapter number 10, verses 5 through 10. And consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. So I said, Lord... I have come to do thy will, O God, in the scroll of the book as it is written for me. And when he said this, hallelujah, when he said this, he said, prepare me a body. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. And see, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Somebody say once for all. all. Say it one more time. Once for all. all. So we thank God for that body. Thank we God. thank God for that body. Thank we thank God for that body that took away our sins. That was born of a virgin. Hallelujah. I said was born of a virgin. Come on and thank him for that. Thank him. Thank him for this. Come on, thank him. The Bible speaks of Galatians for just a moment. And I was just reading this in my own, in my own time of prayer. That in the fullness of time. That God sent forth a redeemer. Hallelujah. That God sent forth a redeemer to redeem us. Let us not be deceived in this hour that redemption is not real. Redemption is real. And this is the season for us to be redeemed. Yeah. You know what that means? Yeah. That means that whatever was owed is now paid. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because we owed a debt we couldn't pay. And he paid a debt he didn't owe. We needed someone to wash our sins away hallelujah and now we sing a brand new song amazing grace the whole day long because Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay come on and let's give the Lord praise this morning hallelujah 
Thank God this morning. We are so excited. You may be seated in his presence. We want to greet all of the saints that are joining us this morning. Amen. Virtually and those of you that are in the sanctuary, those of you that are traveling, we certainly want to honor our ruling elder, Elder Felix Corto, in the beautiful hot nation of Africa. In the beautiful warm city of Accra, amen. We want to say honor to him, to our resident pastor, Pastor Shannon, amen, who is home healing, amen. And certainly to all of our leaders, our elders, we want to say Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, amen. Can y'all believe that it's Christmas 2021? I can't hardly believe that it's Christmas 2021. Unbelievable that we are already uh, almost at New Year's 2022. Wow. Come on and let's praise God that we finished strong. That we finished strong. We are primarily virtually this morning and we thank God for those of you that are in the house uh, this morning with us. And if you're looking for a Christmas gift, you still haven't gotten all your gifts I have a gift that you can give that anybody would love. So we are packaging these three books together for a beautiful Christmas gift of $50. You can get all three books. Amen. So organizing military style by our own daughter, April Harris. Come on and give God praise. After 23 years in the military, certainly she can write the book. And then the friendship rib. Whoa. How many of you? Mm, that's a whole nother conversation. But sometimes we get it all messed up. And we don't realize that we just need to be good friends. And again, this is by our daughter, April Harris. And then, of course, Living with the Advantage. You don't want to miss that. This book is by April's mother. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. And so all three books you can get as a stocking stuffer. Uh, maybe you, you know, have people you just don't know what to get them. And, or maybe you just, you know, don't want to give another gift card or you don't want to give another pair of socks. You don't want to give another tie. How about giving books? How about that? And we're going to let all three go today for the wonderful gift of $50. If you would like it, we'll ship it out to you immediately. Amen. Put it in the chat, those of you that are watching virtually, and we will send it to you and you'll get it before Christmas. Come on now. Amen. Amen. If you put it in the chat, I want all the special uh, books, all three books, The Friendship Rib, uh, Organizing Military Style, and Living with the Advantage, Mother and Daughter Books. Come on. I want, y'all need to shout right there. Amen. I want all three books for my $50 gift to the ministry. Amen. And we'll see to it that you get it by Christmas. God is moving in this space. Praise God. Uh, I'm not going to be long before you because I want to share the word of the Lord with you and let you go. Many of you are traveling today. Some of you are on your way uh, to other places, maybe to join family. And I just want you to look at a scripture with me in Matthew chapter number 22, Matthew's gospel chapter number 22. And you can also find this scripture in Luke chapter number 10, verse 27. And this is the fourth Sunday of Advent, which is, uh, I think, let me just go through that because maybe you may not know what all four of the Advent Sundays are. The first one was hope. Somebody say hope. The second one is peace. The third one is joy. We talked about joy the last time, amen. And the last one is love. Wow, somebody say love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that even this moment is being fueled by the love of God. Not going to be a long time, but I do want to share something with you from Matthew chapter number 22, Matthew's gospel chapter number 22. And verse 37, if you have it, 
you can say, I have it. And if you don't, you can say, I'm on my way. Chapter 22 and verse 37. And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. Verse 39, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourselves. And all of the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Let me read this out of the Message Bible. And Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all of your passion, with all of your prayers, with all of your intelligence. And this is the most important and the first on the list. But there is a second to set alongside. Love others as well as you love yourself. I need you to hear that. That was powerful. That, was, that, that snuck up on us, didn't it? Love others as well as you love yourself. Listen to Luke chapter number 10 from the message. And he said that you love the Lord your God with all of your passion with all of your prayer, with all of your muscle, and with all of your intelligence, but that you love your neighbor as well as you love yourself. Hallelujah. And I want to talk just for a moment from the subject talking back. Talking back. Amen. So many people during this season uh, are not comfortable because of the fact that they are by themselves or they don't necessarily have anyone to share Christmas with. But this morning, I want to focus not on loving others and believe it or not, not even on loving God. I want to talk this morning about loving yourself. Hallelujah. Somebody say, love me. Love me. me, love me. Say it loud, me love me. Self-love is not selfishness, but self-love is a responsibility that has been given to us by the Lord. Self-love is the fountain for all other authentic expressions of love. Somebody needs to hear that. Self-love is the fountain for all other authentic expressions of love. Anything that flows from you should be authentic because of who you are to you. And sometimes I think we lose ourselves in the process of giving gifts or making others comfortable. We forget about ourselves. Listen to the text. Love your neighbor as well as you love yourself. Listen to that. Listen to that. Love your neighbor, watch this, as well as you love yourself. I'm going to say that one more time. Mommies who sacrifice. Daddies who sacrifice. Parents, grandmothers who sacrifice. And in the process, I was talking to my daughter earlier, and I said, welcome to Parenting 101. Because now you have a little person that you are always going to be responsible for. And that, come on now, and in the process of that, there are times that you will make sacrifices for this little one right now that normally, come on, you wouldn't have had to make if you weren't a parent. How many of you know what I'm talking about? I can remember cooking dinner for them and I didn't have anything to eat. I can remember going to the grocery store with just enough money and at that time, let me tell the whole truth, it was food stamps. Let me, let me, not, let me, not, let me not paint the wrong picture. Uh, I, 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 come on now. Uh, I, with just enough food stamps to buy something to fix for them. And they would ask, Mommy, you going to eat? And I said, oh, Mommy's already eaten. That wasn't true. I was waiting on them to finish because whatever they left, I was going to eat it. 
Hello, somebody. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I, I, I know about making sure that they had clothes, that they had something new when I did not have enough to purchase something for myself. There came a season when I was able to mat match us up and we all three had on the same color or we all three had on the same outfit. But there were a lot of times that I had to go to the Salvation Army. I had to go to the Purple Heart of the second hand store to get something for myself because all I had was for them. Anybody know anything about this? Am I talking to any mommies and daddies in this house? And even now as adults, I always think about them. Anything I get, I, I put aside. I was talking to my insurance agent not long ago and increasing my insurance. And, um, and immediately they asked, uh, who will be the beneficiaries? Uh, S-H-A-N-N-O-N-A-P-P-R-I-L-L-E. So that even after I'm gone, they can at least get a hamburger. And it's so very easy even as a shepherd to always think about the church. Always think about the people. I cannot tell you how many pastors I know have burnt out, have gone into bankruptcy to fund the ministry, to make sure that the ministry doesn't fail. Some of them have lost their houses. Some have lost their cars, their families, because somewhere in their mind, they did not matter to themselves. Hear the scriptures again. Love the Lord your God with all your passion, with all your strength, with all your muscle, and with all your intelligence. But love your neighbor as well as you love yourself. What does that mean? That means that self-care, self-love is our responsibility that God gives us. And that even in this holiday season, that we should not give until it hurts. Oh, y'all didn't say nothing to me. How many of you have heard that lie? Give until it hurts. Give until it hurts. Give until it hurts. No, stop giving when it hurts. Uh-oh, listen to that. Listen to that quiet. Our culture is to always sacrifice. And many times we hide our self-hatred under our giving. We don't really love ourselves, so we try to cover it up by overgiving and overcompensating and not necessarily loving ourselves and even feeling good about the sacrifice that we made because we did not love ourselves. I raise this scripture again to you. Love your neighbor as well as you love yourself. So the question this morning is, how well do you love you? How many women are in relationships that are painful, that are abusive? How many men are in relationships where it doesn't fit them anymore, but they stay in spite of their pain. We hide it under our Christianity. We say, well, I made a vow. I made a vow, but the first vow you make is to God. And the second vow you must make is to yourself. If loving you is hurting me, then I need to move. Y'all not gonna like this kind of preaching. Y'all not gonna like this kind of teaching because the world is upside down and the world is lopsided. There are people shopping today. There are people maxing out their credit cards to prove to someone else that they love them and they don't love themselves. I'm talking, I'm talking deep this morning. I'm talking in your spirit this morning. How well do you treat yourself? Do you ever take yourself out on a date? Do you ever treat yourself to a Gladys Knight concert? I, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. I meant to say James Cleveland, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, Albertina Walker, I'm sorry, Annie. I, I didn't, that slipped out, come on here. Amen, you ever feel like you're worth a $100 ticket? 
to sit on the front row and watch the Lion King? Ah, come on, somebody. You ever feel like you are deserved? Come on. A, a treat at your favorite restaurant without anybody else going with you? Come on, Joe Beals. You feel, ever feel like you deserve that $100 lobster? Oh, glory to God. Hello, somebody. Somebody say, me, love me. And it is a commandment of the Lord. Love God with all of your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength, your passion. Listen, your muscle, your intelligence. But love your neighbor as well as you love yourself. I was talking to a group of leaders, spiritual leaders the other morning. And we were on a forum. We were on a, 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 a what do you call it, Zoom and it was a, a group of spiritual leaders. And let me not even talk about that one first. Let me talk about this one. We were talking with a group of bishops. I was on just the other night uh, with a group of esteemed bishops. Uh, Bishop uh, Yvette Flunder. Many of you know her uh, from the uh, Walter Hawkins, Edwin Hawkins era. Thank you, Lord. Could have been dead or asleep or what is it, cold outdoors. That's Yvette Flunder. And then I was with uh, another wonderful uh, uh, Latin American bishop, and we were on this forum, and they asked, what did I think was the problem with women not being promoted? What did I, why did I think that uh, women were not seen in leadership roles? Was it the Pauline epistles? Was it the patriarchal systems in our churches? And why did she ask me? And I said, are you sure? I said, Flunder will give you a much nicer answer. I said, this Latin American Bishop Maria from the United Methodist Church, she'll give you more of a social action answer. Why would you ask me that question? I said, don't you know my brand? You know my brand is cut no, no chaser. You, you, why would you ask me that question? They said, because we want the honest truth. I said, the reason that women don't do well in ministry is because of self-hatred. Y'all ain't going to say nothing now. See how quiet that guy got nothing to do with Paul. Paul is dead. Paul, 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 Paul is not speaking now. Paul lived uh, 2,000 years ago. It doesn't matter how you beat us up with that scripture. Paul is dead. Has nothing to do with patriarchal systems. How many times have I been in a room where a woman says out of her mouth, I can never have a woman pastor. I don't have a problem with men. Men love me. That's been a problem. The problem is that women don't like women. It's not men that won't come to a church pastor by women. It's women who say in public, I would never have a woman pastor. In social media the other day, a woman confronted and said, and what is a woman being a bishop anyway? That wasn't a man, that was a woman. And it was a man that said, she gonna get you. That's my bishop. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. Self-hatred. I don't like you because I don't like me. Oh, I'm preaching so good. I preach it better than you shouting Hello, somebody. To those of you in our virtual sanctuary, I want you to understand that the hatred that comes from women for women is, a, it, it, it is, it is criminal how we see each other. And I told him, I shared a story that I was in Baltimore many, many years ago, and I walked into a service, and Bishop Audrey Brunson was preaching. And I, 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 I was one of the day speakers. I hadn't yet made it to the, to the plenary section uh, of the program. I was a day speaker. And so they told me that this woman was going to come and she was Bishop Audrey Bronson from the Sanctuary Church uh, there in Philadelphia. 
And she was a renowned uh, uh, scholar and she was an academician and she was a professor at the Cheney Seminary and she was all of these wonderful things. And I remember standing in the door as she was preaching and she was preaching with power. She was preaching the gospel. She was preaching a Christology that was so pristine and so precise. I said, wow, she can preach. But listen to what I said because she was a woman, but she shouldn't be a bishop. And I stood in the door. I couldn't even go and sit down. But I was enjoying the message. But I was conflicted. I was conflicted because of the years of, of indoctrination. I was conflicted. Come on here. Because of the years of, of being fed from the pulpit. Self-hatred. Woo! Y'all ain't going to like me today. I was conflicted. I was enjoying the word. But I was not agreeing with the vessel. Uh, I was enjoying the message. Uh, I could hear the scholarship. I could feel the power of God. But I was conflicted because I've been told to hate myself. And after the message was over, I went up to greet her. And she took me by my hand. She said, I saw you standing in the door. And she said, I know what you're struggling with. She said, you're struggling with your theology. You enjoyed the message. I said, yes, ma'am. I said, it was a powerful word. I can even remember the text. That's how powerful it was. She said, but you're conflicted because you don't think a woman should be a bishop. She grabbed my hand and she pulled it to her. And she said, but you're seeing yourself. She said, if you can't love me, it shows me you don't love you. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. She said, and you know what I'm going to do for you? I said, what? She said, I'm going to invite you to preach at my church. And she opened the door to her church, which opened the gates of Philadelphia to me and the East Coast. Y'all ain't saying, it wasn't a man that did it. It was a woman that did it. Woo! But I had been taught to hate her because I had been taught to hate myself. Oh, I'm preaching better than you shouting. Come on, somebody. We get conflicted. We get conflicted because of how we have been indoctrinated to not love ourselves. Let me not even talk about African Americans who hate other African Americans. Oh, come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but I ain't going to call nobody black to come and fix my plumbing. I'm not going to call nobody. They ain't on time. They charge too much. Listen to our self-hatred. That has nothing to do with their accuracy of business, nor does it have to do with their ability to do it. It has to do with the fact that we've been taught to hate ourselves. Oh, come on, somebody. Uh, I'm preaching better than you're shouting. Uh, we've been taught to despise ourselves as a people. We've been taught to despise ourselves as a race. Uh, we've been taught to despise ourselves even in our gender. Black men hate black men. Uh, come on now. Uh, Light-skinned men hate dark-skinned men. Uh, tall men hate short men. Uh, is anybody hearing me? Uh, so you try to prove yourself uh, by buying another car or getting another woman huh? but the problem is you hate yourself so we covered up with sex we covered up with toys we covered up with spending too much money we covered up with overeating huh? we covered up with over consuming y'all ain't gonna say nothing now huh? we don't love ourselves we give ourselves diabetes we give ourselves high blood pressure Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Uh, we give ourselves all of these diseases uh, that come from us overeating ourselves. Uh, nobody stuffed it in our mouth. Uh, nobody made us eat it. Uh, but that's how we destroy ourselves. Uh, we destroy ourselves with our fork. Uh, we destroy ourselves with our spending. Uh, we destroy ourselves with our sexuality. But the Bible says, uh, love your neighbor as well as you love yourself. When I was in nursing full time, this is supposed to be an easy message. Let me calm down. Let me settle myself down. It's supposed to be a Christmas message. <laughs> somebody, somebody go tell Santa, come on back. <laughs> we do this to ourselves. 
We do this to ourselves. When I was in nursing, I would go into room after room after room after room. Room after room after room. And sicknesses and diseases. 90% of them were caused by self-hatred. talking to a young person the other day and instead of the doctor said I have diabetes it runs in my family and I said okay so are you going to change what you eat well kind of I said well have you given up your sugar and your starch not really how many people have I seen in the hospital with lung cancers because they smoked when the package clearly says that the Surgeon General, y'all not going to say nothing. Come on now, come, come on, come on. Uh, that the Surgeon General has said that smoking is harmful or hazardous to your health. And now it tells you that it will kill you. And how many people, I was asking a young lady the other day, I said, so why do you keep buying them? I just smoke one a day. Well, why do you buy them? Why, why do you smoke even the one a day? Ain't nobody... Ain't nobody blowing smoke in your lungs. You doing it. See how quiet it's getting right now? And we try to cover up the fact that we are not good stewards of ourselves. We're trying to take care of others. We'll feed the little orphans in Africa before we stop eating Oreos. We'll give an offering to an orphanage. We'll go down to the rescue mission and we'll serve all day in the cold. We'll ring a bell. Come on now. We'll ring a bell for the Salvation Army and go home and drink ourselves to death. We'll cover up the fact that we are not good stewards of ourselves mentally and even emotionally. We cover it up. We, we say to ourselves, well, you know, it's just this. No, 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 no. Listen to me carefully. I cannot take care of you with a bad mind. How many people are in positions of power and positions of authority that don't have a good connect with their own mind? I was in seminary, and while I was in seminary, I met a lot of crazy professors. Oh, they know the lesson, but they're crazy as a, as a bunch of bricks. Come on here. Come on now. So they, they know so much, but, but, but listen, they're full of hatred. They're full of prejudice. Look at what happened in the last election. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Look at what happened with Christians hating Christians. This wasn't Buddhists hating Christians. This was not uh, Muslims hating Christians. This was right-wing Christians demonizing left-wing Christians. The same cross, the same Christ, the same resurrection, the same upper room. But because you believe one way politically, then that makes me a demon because I believe another way politically. Look at how we hate ourselves. You don't hear Jews get on Facebook and hate each other. Oh, come on, somebody. Okay, let me walk and look at this way. You don't see Muslims uh, hating each other. On, you don't see, see Buddhists uh, uh, hating each other. Come on now. If you've ever been in a nail shop, you don't hear them fussing with each other and calling each other out. But Lord God, get on social media and you hear us even as black believers despising other believers or white believers despising black believers this thing is embedded but yet they will build orphanages they'll build churches they'll, 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 they'll dig wells but they hate us and they teach us to hate ourselves The scriptures are clear. Love the Lord your God with all of your strength, with all of your muscle, with all of your intelligence. But love your neighbor as well as you love yourself. Don't get this twisted. Self-love is not selfishness. 
Because I take a vacation does not mean that I'm selfish. Because I go to bed early and I didn't answer your call doesn't mean I'm selfish. Oh, glory. Preach to yourself. Preach to yourself, lady. Preach to yourself. Because I turn off my cell phone and I'm not coming out of my house tonight does not mean I'm selfish. It means I love me. Come on here. Ah, come on now. That I don't put my life at risk to take care of you. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That if I can't talk you through it, I can't walk you through it. Somebody called me one night and said, I need some money for gas. And I said, well, baby, let me just tell you something. Uh, I can't get it to you until noon and tomorrow. Noon, I need it tonight. I said, I can't help you. She said, well, can you cash at me? Nope. <laughs> I said, I surely can't. Uh, well, Bishop, I just need to get I said, baby, I cannot help you. It is 1130 at night. I don't know where you are. I don't know if you're at a gas station or a dope house. I don't know where you are. And guess what? I'm not coming out to see. Well, you ought to be able to say, no, 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 some old, uh-uh, no, uh-uh, 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 don't pull, don't play guilt on me. Don't, no, no, I'm not coming out. I'm not cash apping you. And if you can't wait till noon, then you just stay where you are. I am not coming out this time of night to take care of you and put my life at risk. See, we think that's sacrifice. No, that's stupid. I'm preaching better than you shouting. Listen to what it says, Brother Charlie. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. In this Advent season, we talk about the love of God. In this Advent season, we talk about the love of Christ. But in this Advent season, I want you to think about the love of self. How much better will I treat myself in this upcoming year? How much better am I going to treat myself? Am I going to change what I eat? Am I going to change how I think about things? Am I going to change uh, how I exercise or how I spend my quality time with myself? Am I going to write myself into my own schedule? Ooh, come on here. Hallelujah. Sometimes I get so busy. I get so busy until the people that work with me, my daughter and others, they say, Bishop, how do you do it? Because we're, we're overwhelmed. We, we don't know how you do it. I said, because I know how to take a Sabbath. I know how to take a Sabbath. I know that if I'm going to get up at 4 in the morning, I got to be in the bed by 8. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. That's self-care. That's self-care. I know if I'm going to live long, I have to lose 70 pounds. That's self-care. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Ah, I wanted to go uh, the quick way and get liposuction, but uh, truth of the matter, I'm scared. Why would I let them cut it off when I can just change the way I eat? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I'm preaching better than you shouting. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Self-care, self-love is not selfish, and it's not against God. And from my self-love flows my authentic expression of love to you. I cannot love you better than I love myself. Let, let, let that settle in your spirit. I cannot love you better than I love myself. Jesus says as he responds to the rich young ruler that comes and says, what is the greatest commandment? And the, and the ruler responded, I've been loving God all my life. And Jesus said, then that's not the problem. Hear the second commandment. And I believe that most of the church gets caught up on love your neighbor. But they never hear, as you love yourself. 
How many believers do I know don't love themselves and they're trying to love God? Your pedigree, your background, your upbringing, your childhood should not stop you from loving yourself. Come on now, your mistakes should not stop you from loving yourself. I'm preaching right now. Hallelujah, your promiscuity should not make you stop loving yourself. Come on here. You should never stop loving you because you are the greatest gift that God ever gave you. I'm all of that in a bag of chips. God knows my name. He calls me out, come on here, of his own image and after his own likeness. God loves me. He died for me. He sent his son to save me. Then I must be pretty important. That baby in the manger was about me. Mary said, I know that I'm a suffer shame. Mary said, I know that this could get me stoned. <laughs> Mary said, I, I, I know that this is, this is going to be a problem in the long run. And the angel said, no, not at all. Because Mary, you are highly favored of the Lord. Do we know that we are highly favored of God? Do you know that you are highly favored of God? How many of us have looked to other things to try to affirm us? Women that look to men for their affirmation. Men who look to their sexual conquerings for their affirmation. Children who look to other children who get in places they would never get because they don't feel good about themselves. Our self-worth matters to God. Our, the way we treat ourselves matters to God. Amen. I will not give an account of how I treated others if I can't give an account of how I treated myself. Hallelujah. I tell you, this scripture tore me up. It doesn't say love your neighbor and love yourself. It says love your neighbor as you love yourself. Matter of fact, the message Bible breaks it down and says love your neighbor as well as you love yourself. So no wonder we hate each other. No wonder we mistreat each other. No wonder we disrespect one another. No wonder we dishonor one another because we don't love them any more than we can love ourselves. Husband, love your wives. As Christ loved the church, love your wives because she is a member of your own body. You don't mistreat your wife because your wife misbehaves. You mistreat your wife because you don't love yourself. Because she's a part of your body. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that when you took her on as your wife, you vowed that you would never cuss her out. You vowed that you would never call her outside of her name. You vowed that you would never slap her. That you vowed that you would always provide for her. You, you vowed that you would never, ever, 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 ever commit adultery. You vowed that. But you can't do it if you don't love yourself. Oh, God, help me, help me. I'm not supposed to be preaching this hard. You treat your wife like you treat yourself. You speak disrespectful to her because you are disrespectful to yourself. You speak evil to your children. Fathers, do not aggravate your children. Come on now. Do not cause them to be angry. But you mistreat your child because you don't love yourself. I see it all the time when we deal with mental health. I see it all the time in education where fathers are yelling at their children. They come in the office yelling. And you look at the child and the child is so withdrawn. You look at the child and the child is acting out in school. You look at the child and the child, her grades are failing, grades are falling. And then when you get the parents in the room, you understand that the child is mentally abused, that the child is emotionally abused. How does a father sleep with his own daughter? Come on, somebody. How does an uncle rape his own niece? Is anybody hearing me today? How does an uncle rape his own nephew? How does a father violate his own son? Because of self-hatred. How does a father walk up and leave his 
his family, self-hatred. Self-hatred. Because if you loved your family as well as you loved yourself, but if you don't love yourself, you don't have any authentic expression of love. The reason that God loves us so much is that God loves himself. Come on, somebody. I say God loves himself. God celebrates himself. Come on now. If you don't praise him, he'll praise himself. Uh, glory to God. If you don't love him, he'll love himself. Uh, hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible said that God is love. Uh, so he can love himself. Uh, and that's why he loves us with such majesty. That's why his love for us is so extravagant and so luscious. Uh, because he loves us. Uh, and the Bible says that we don't love God uh, because we just love God. But we love God because he first loved us. How does God love us so lusciously, so extravagantly? Because he loves himself. We don't love ourselves, folks. I want you to challenge yourself in this new year to treat you better. You spend too much money. Do better. You eat too much. Do better. You don't rest enough. Do better. You lose your temper too much. Do better. Ooh, y'all ain't gonna say nothing. You get annoyed too much. Do better. See, because when you get annoyed, it's your liver, it's your heart. Come on now. You're not. You're not. You're not hurting the person that you're annoyed with. You're hurting yourself. The Bible said, don't go to bed with anger. Oh, glory to God. Not because it bothers the other person, but through the night, I'm preaching better than you're shouting. Your organs are displaced. Your, your, your recovery system is delayed because you went to bed angry. And your anger doesn't hurt anybody else until it destroys you. You get so annoyed with things. You get so aggravated with people. It got nothing to do with them. It got to do with you. How it makes you feel. When, that, when you can't control a situation, when you can't manipulate a situation, when you're not in charge of a situation, it irritates you. It ain't got nothing to do with the situation. It has to do with you and how you view yourself and how you think that this situation makes you look. I don't want to look stupid. I don't want nobody to embarrass me. I don't want nobody to make me look bad. How can anybody make you look bad if you don't look bad to you? Can't nobody embarrass you if you don't embarrass yourself. See how quiet that is right there. Amen. Even in a bad situation, I'm going to shine. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Glory to God. Even in a bad situation, I'm going to glow because I feel so good about myself. Uh, even if you set a trap for me, I'm, I'm going to be all right uh, because I love me. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Uh, doesn't matter how bad you talk about me. Uh, I don't talk about me. Uh, so it don't hurt my feelings. Uh, it doesn't matter how bad uh, you try to scandalize my name. Uh, I don't scandalize my name. Uh, so it don't have no value to me we're trying to get others to love us when we don't love ourselves women oh god let me just hit this a minute how many of us are trying to get men to love us outside of us loving ourselves young, young man asked me the other day so what would it take for me to you know kind of be your guy <laughs> Oh, I get applications. <laughs> Henderson, we, we get applications. Oh, we ain't we ain't down on applications. We got applicants. I had one young man, he asked me, he said, Well, don't you think that all that you do is, you know, is gonna turn off the guys and not the right guy? You're not going to make me turn down me to get you. 
Oh, no, 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 no. It took me too, too long to get this 500 light, watt light bulb. It took me too long to get this 1,000 watt light bulb. I had to go through too much. I started with a 30 watt. I started with a 60 watt. And then I made my way to a 75 watt. And now I'm at 100. And now you want me to turn my glow down? Because my glow is so glow so bright that it, may, it intimidates you, sugar. I don't intimidate you. You already intimidated. You intimidated while you shave. You intimidated in your own mirror. I can't intimidate you. I'm preaching. I'm preaching better than you're shouting. I shine because I like me. I love me. And I work on my shine. I gloss my shine. I invest in my shine. I educated my shine. I consecrated my shine. And I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how fine you are. You can't make me hate me to love you. Love your neighbor as well as you love yourself. And when you show up authentic, you will draw the right person. I'm going to say that again. When you, draw, when you show up authentic, You'll draw the right people. When you show up as your authentic, loving self, self, if he's the right person and he's authentic, then he won't have a problem with you. You ain't got to sleep with him to get him. I'm going to say it again. You, come on, Dore Shabbat. Hallelujah. <laughs> you ain't got to go that route to get the right man. When you go that route, you don't, have, you don't love yourself. If you sleep with a man before you marry him, you don't love yourself. Because you didn't get nothing. My mother said, oh, you want to have sex, huh? She said, I know all your little friends is having sex. She said, have a seat, baby. Let me talk to you. She said, all it is is in and out, up and down, back and forth. <laughs> and I looked at my mother. I must have been about 12 or 13. And I said, my mother's crazy. Because all my friends, is not, that's not what they're saying. She said, baby, all it is is a little up and down, a little in and out, and a little back and forth. She said, if that's all you get from a man, you didn't get nothing. You didn't get his heart. You didn't get his vision. You didn't get his purpose. You got nothing. Love yourself better than that. How many mothers need to tell their daughters? How many men need to tell their sons? Man, save your seed for your wife. Oh, come on, somebody. Don't get quiet now. You love it when I talk to the women, but let me talk to the brothers. Come on now. How many mothers and fathers need to tell their children, their sons, save your seed for your wife. Don't drop your seed all over everywhere. Listen to what the word says. Leave the harlot's house alone. Get out of the harlot's bed. Son, love yourself enough that when you get to the altar, nobody else in the world has your seed love yourself enough to not be in bankruptcy love yourself enough to not be broke love yourself enough to manage your finances better Oh, I'm preaching good. Uh, love yourself enough. Glory to God that you got a little stash. Love yourself enough that you don't have to wear everything on your body. Wear, love yourself enough that you got a little portfolio, that you got a little investment, that you got a little pension coming. Love yourself enough.
This is the last season of Advent. The last Sunday is love. We know about the love of God. We know about the love of Jesus. We know about trying to love everybody else. But this morning, I come to you with the word of the Lord. Love everybody as well as you love yourself. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Come on and receive the word even now. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet and receive the word as you clap your hands, as you lift your, your Come on. Come on. Come on. Wherever the word found you, it's all right. Glory to God. How many of you say the word found me in some areas? Amen. How many of you can do a better job with yourself? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the word. I thank you for the word. And I thank you, Lord, that we are the hearers and the doers of the word. That even as we go through Christmas, glory to God, we're not getting in debt. In the name of Jesus. I come against the spirit of regret and guilt and shame uh, that even now we feel that we are loved because we give gifts. But Lord, help us to love ourselves, that we become the gift. That we become the gift. Forgive us for mistreating ourselves. Forgive us for abusing ourselves. Forgive us for not taking better care of our bodies, of our finances, of our hearts. Many of us have given our hearts away and got nothing back. Many of us have given our money away, our fortune away, and got nothing back. Now it's time, I hear you, Lord, for us to give it back to ourselves, to build ourselves up on our most holy faith. That salvation came as a personal gift to improve our lives, our personal lives. That I'm no better behind this pulpit than I am behind my kitchen sink. That I got to be something before I even get here. That I got to love me before I even stand before the people. God, you've given me me. Help me to be a better me to me tried to love husband, tried to love children, tried to love wife, tried to love church, tried to love the work, tried to love the ministry. But God teaches us in this season to love ourselves, to know when to rest, to know when to pull back, and to not feel guilty because someone else's emergency is not at the top of our list of priorities. Help us to not be pulled and drawn still trying to prove ourselves to people that we've already proven ourselves to over and over again. Lord, I pray now in the name of Jesus that we will be better stewards of ourselves, that we will be better stewards of our finances. We will be better stewards of our physical bodies. We'll be better stewards of our emotional health and our hearts, our romantic self, that we'll be better stewards and God, everywhere that we have missed a step, forgive us. Everywhere that we have not been authentic, forgive us. Every place where we have not been true to ourselves, Lord, forgive us. Now, sweet Holy Spirit, come and empower us to do this good work. To love God, to love our neighbor as well as we love ourselves. And Father, I pray for the healing that's needed in some hearts right now that's watching. Maybe they didn't have the, all they wanted as a child. Maybe there was hurt in the, in the upbringing. Maybe that hurt has hindered them from being their authentic self. I pray now in the name of Jesus that you, Spirit of God, you, Spirit of truth, will go to the root of that hurt, that rejection, that abandonment, and heal completely. Lord, I thank you that in that marriage that there's a struggle for attention. There's a struggle for love. There's a struggle. But God, help each partner to love themselves first. Even now in the home where there is, there is 
not even love between parents and children or rivalry even between children. Help them to love themselves. Lord, in our church, help us to love ourselves. Even in our race, help us to love ourselves. Let us not be so critical of others that are in the same group. Help us not to be so downplaying and disrespectful of one another. Help us to love our black selves. Help whites to love their white selves. Help every ethnic group to love themselves. That the diversity is a part of your creativity. Help us to love ourselves. Help us to love us better. Let us do a better job in 2022. In the name of Jesus. Can you lift your hands and just pray in the spirit? I hear this now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just pray in the spirit right now. Those of you that are at home. Those of you that are here in the facility. Just let's just pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little one. To him belong, oh yes. They are weak, but he is strong. Listen, yes. <laughs> Jesus, he loves me.
because the Bible tells you to do that. Never give more of yourself away than you give to yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Jesus. Jesus. You love me. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I know he loves me. If you want to give an offering this morning, oh, yes. This is a good time to sow. I know he loves me. So, <laughs> hallelujah, this is a good time to give. Oh, yes, come on, come on, Jesus. If you're giving by PayPal, God bless you, do it. If you're giving by Cash App, do it. If you're giving in our website, you may give it. Or if you're giving by the United States Postal Service, send your checks to 1745 East Grand Boulevard. Hallelujah. Detroit, Michigan, 48211. Hallelujah. Tells. Come on. Hallelujah. One more time. Now call your name and call yourself. Oh, yes. Come on. Call your name. Y'all scared? <laughs> Don't be ashamed to love yourself. It's not selfish. It's not wrong. It's not ungodly. <laughs> Don't nobody else love me. I know I love me. For the Bible tell me so. Ooh, hallelujah. For the Bible. For the Bible tells me. Tells me so. I can do a better job with me. For the Bible. Define yourself. 
yourself by your ministry. Don't define yourself by your family. Don't define yourself by your marriage. Define yourself by who God says you are. That you are created in his image. And you are created after his likeness. Now I want you to do a better job. How many of you can do a better job with yourself? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you as we get ready to receive the communion this morning. We thank you that the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus has been given for me. Hallelujah. That this is his body broken for me. How valuable am I that his body would be broken for me. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus, we dedicate this and we consecrate this bread. That it is not just a wafer, but it's the body of Christ broken for me. We eat it together. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to stop feeling guilty about loving yourself. It's not selfish. It's godly. I can love you because I love me so, so lusciously. I take care of me extravagantly. Hallelujah. I, I, I got to a point where I could buy 500 count sheets. I remember when I couldn't do it. And I had them babies, I had to buy sheets that kind of scratch you. But now I treat myself to at least one good pair of good sheets, 800 count. Come on now. Don't feel guilty about the fact that you got nice sheets on your bed. It's your bed. It's where you dream. It's where you have visions. It's where God speaks to you. Treat yourself better this year. Take this cup now. It was his blood for you, for me. And we drink it together. Hallelujah. For the Bible. <laughs> for the Bible. to give yourself a hand give you a hand we always said give the Lord a hand give you a hand hallelujah oh we love you Lord hallelujah I want you to have a great Christmas praise God as we come back on next Sunday even back to this sanctuary we will have already celebrated Christmas I believe is this coming Saturday Next Sunday, if you'll come and spend some time with me, we're going to have a little get-together at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. You don't have to do anything but show up. I'm inviting all of you to an end-of-the-year Christmas slash birthday party. And all you got to do is show up. You don't have to pay nothing. All you got to do is come. I'm treating me. I'm not looking for you to pay for my birthday party. I'm going to give myself a party. Amen. And if you come, praise God, you can bring up to three or four people. Bring your family. Talking to the cathedral family. Bring folks with you. We can take up to 125 people. So I want you to jam it out. And guess what? We ain't going to be dressed. We're going to Buddy's Pizza. Shields Pizza. I get them mixed up. We're going to Shields Pizza. We're going to eat pizza, drink beer, and whatever else. Praise God. We're going to have a good old time. You can't make me feel bad about it. Amen. Amen. We're going to give ourselves a party. 
and you can dress down you can enjoy yourself praise God we just gonna laugh and talk and enjoy each other is that all right as we get ready to go to our 50th year praise God so this is our end of the year party next Sunday four o'clock I want you to join me at Shields Pizza on y'all will find out next week praise the Lord <laughs> and I want y'all to come is that all right amen amen and we're gonna have a good old fellowship and time together and those of you that are not that are not in the sanctuary you can come to the party amen those of you that uh, want to bring your family bring them out we can take up to 100 plus people and then we're just going to enjoy ourselves as we close the year out this year we are not doing a watch night service so you are free on new year's eve find yourself a good service to attend praise god but we will be in church the first sunday of january amen january the second come on give god a praise hopefully this will be our last year of no watch service but just for public health reasons is that all right we're going to be mindful that uh, we can do something on zoom we'll send out the information but i think it's just safe that we not crowd in yet is that all right please keep my sister and her family in your prayers she's recovering nicely praise god and all of those that are at home pastor shannon and uh deacon deacon andre praise the lord amen let's just keep one another in prayer but remember what the word says love them as well as you love yourself amen and now unto him who is able to keep us from falling to the only wise God who will present us before the majesty of his glory with exceeding joy. He is all majestic, all holy, all righteous. We give him praise and we honor this God who loved us so much that he gave us to ourselves. And now as we leave this place, let the blood of Jesus be traction to our tires. Let the angels of the Lord go before us. And the great host of heaven come behind us and be our rear guard. Protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Watch over us, Holy Spirit. Guide us by the cloud by day and the fire by night. Protect us in our minds. Protect us in our physical bodies and in our emotions. As we celebrate this holiday season, be with us. And when we arrive to our destination today, we thank you that all is well. We thank you that no thief or robber has come nigh our dwelling. Neither the famine nor the pestilence shall overtake us. And we thank you. Now bring us back at the appointed time. And we give you all the glory that you will keep us in your grip and keep us in your gaze until we meet together again. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Merry Christmas. And the peace of the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. Come on. So let the church come on. Oh, let the church. So let the church, hallelujah, say amen, let the whole church say amen. Whoa!